the endo museum is the outside rough stuff that looks like it's going in all different directions so your muscle can kind of be pulled and not tear. The skin, the sarcolemma, is this pink stuff. And the pink stuff has little pock marks in it. Can you find those? If I look at this side, can you see there's some pink stuff right here and it looks like there's some holes? Can you all see that okay? There's a hole. Now this is a model, so it's not actually a hole. But if you were to look at it on the other side, what's on the other side of one of those holes? There's a hole right there. Oh, it turns into a tube. Oh, it's a blue tube. That's a T tube. Because it's going into the muscle. Can you see that? So that's one of those places where it punches down into the muscle from the skin of the muscle. So let's look at it again. The pink stuff is sarcolemma. This is the skin on the muscle. And wherever you see a little indentation, if you were to follow that inside, it would turn into a T-tubule. And on either side of the T-tubule is going to be a little container called a cistern, and that's holding calcium. We'll see it in a minute. So this is the sarcolemma. Now I want to find where the neuron meets the muscle at the motor end plate. The neuron is this dude. Can you see him yellow right there? That's his axon. It's been cut. You're looking into the axon. So if I look at that from the side, oh, this is a nucleus. That's how I know I'm at this level. I haven't taught you this yet, but this yellow stuff on the out that looks like a little Debbie roll. Good. Here's an axon. It's transmitting a signal. Are your electrical cords at home insulated or not? And so they don't arc. That's a good idea. Because it also makes sense that insulation would make the signal go faster. Yeah, because it insulates the signal. I've got neuron, I mean, I've got sodium coming in, and I would like the sodium when it gets in to not leak back out. So I insulate it. So I'm going to wrap something around it to insulate it. That's what this thing is. It's a wrapping. Can you see how it goes around? It's a cell that wraps axons. That's myelin. When you have multiple sclerosis, this thing falls apart. And suddenly, the neuron is not insulated anymore. And you can't get the signal to the muscle. Do you understand that? OK, so you're going you're gonna to get all this. So this guy is a cell. He's called a Schwann cell. Is that on your list? Schwann, S-C-H-W-A-N-N. -N. It is a Schwann. So, is it the very bottom of it? Schwann cell makes M Y E L I N. That's the insulation around an axon, myelin. So we call it myelination. How can I tell? How? I'm going to show you again. It's this little guy that's going around in a circle that around the yellow thing. How can I tell he's a cell? Because he has his own nucleus right here. So he's like a pancake that folds around the axon. And the axon is the yellow thing. Remember that we are down at the microscopic level. Okay? So I have this wrapping around an axon. Here's what it looks like. Does it look familiar? If you wrap it, the wrapping is right here. So this is one, two, three, four, five Schwann cells that are wrapped around the axon, and there's gaps between them. So this is a Schwann cell.
The myelin is white, which is why axons look like they're white. It's a fatty white coating and it insulates the electricity. Does that make sense to you? Fat would insulate electricity? Yep. It's a fast way to get a signal from one end of the uh, neuron to the end of the axon. Good? So that's what we're looking at. Okay, so so far I have a, an axon wrapped by a Schwann cell. And that Schwann cell uh, looks like a hot dog. What? It looks like a finger like this. Yes. I, I like to think of it as a little Debbie roll. Okay, here's that axon continuing, and there's a Schwann cell. Here's the axon, and now the axon is above the folded looking thing. Here's the folded looking thing. What's that called? That's the motor end plate. Here's the motor end plate. I'm just tracing it. These little white things inside the axon that are waiting to be released, we colored them green, but those little white balls are vesicles of what? Acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. What's the blue space between everybody? What's the space between the neuron and the motor end plate called? The synaptic, the synaptic cleft. cleft. So the little white things are the vesicles waiting to be released into the blue space to go across and hit the motor end plate. Do you know where we are? The blue is the synaptic cleft. That's the space. It's just a space. Good? If you go in even further, maybe it will focus it, maybe it won't. Okay, the blue is like an empty river. It's waiting for the acetylcholine to go into the river and then cross and go to the receptors on the motor end plate. You can't see the receptors on here, they're too small. Good, everybody know where we are? This is the neuromuscular junction. This is where the neuron meets the muscle. The terminal end bulb is right above the motor end plate. The neuromuscular junction, the NMJ, is where the neuron meets the muscle. Is that true? Yes, that's why they call it the NMJ. When you give patients medication, it's going to affect what happens in the synaptic cleft, either to what happens before it or what happens after it, the pre or the post. Everybody with me on the drawing? You got the drawing in your head that we did already? Okay, let's cross the gap. So let's say that the signal comes down the axon, it's insulated, it gets there fast, right? The Schwann cell helps it be insulated. Signal arrives, boom, the acetylcholine comes out, it's released. This thing was asleep before and now it's awake. Good? The skin of the muscle, the sarcolemma is this motor end plate, right? What's the charge on this skin? Is it negative or positive right now? It's negative, I gotta turn it positive. Once I turn it positive, then I'm gonna go down into all the T-tubules and release who? Sodium. I'm gonna release calcium, aren't I? Because I want calcium to get to the circumference. Okay, let's find the T-tubule. So that charge spreads across the skin, right? So all along the skin or the sarcolemma, that charge is spreading. It's sodium out here and it's gonna start going into these T-tubules. Sodium going down into these T-tubules. Down, down, down into these T-tubules. And all the way around a T-tubule, let's find what's around a T-tubule. On either side of a T-tubule, there's this kind of tan looking thing. That's a terminal cistern. Here's one and here's one. Now y'all didn't draw the detail in our drawing because that would have been too much. So can you see that the terminal cistern is where this webby looking thing is thick? Because it butts up against the blue thing. So on either side of the blue thing, this is the terminal, this is the T-tubule. On either side is a cistern. One, two, three, that's three things. What's that called? Triad. A triad. One, two, three. 
three things. A terminal cistern, a T-tubule, a terminal cistern. One, two, three. This webby looking stuff is what's called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Do you remember endoplasmic reticulum? Remember there was a smooth and a rough? This is smooth. It's where calcium is stored. In a muscle, it's called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, right, for flesh, instead of the endoplasmic reticulum. So it's the same stuff. So where it gets thick, up against the blue thing, that's a triad. Now, is everybody with me? Just, you gotta just identify the parts, that's all, on this thing. So I have got my sodium coming down these T-tubules to release the calcium out of these guys. Who's the calcium going to? What's the name of the functional unit? Sarcomere. The sarcomere, right? I want the calcium to come out of these sarcoplasmic reticulum, these terminal cisterns, and go into the sarcomere. Let's find a sarcomere. I see bands. You see bands? Is the Z-disc a light or a dark band? It's light because it's what, which filament is in there? Actin, actin or myosin? Actin. actin, right? So let's find two light bands. There's one and there's one. Find it on your wiki. Here's a light band, and then this is a Z-disc, and this is a Z-disc. Let me point that out with two pointers. My instruments are on a Z-disc and a Z-disc. Everything in between them is the sarcomere. Good. Why is this one dark? Because this is the M line. And what's overlapping right here? Actin and myosin. So it's dark on either side of the M line. Does that make sense? Isn't that our drawing? So I have a Z disc and a Z disc. So from here to here is a sarcomere. There's a whole bunch of sarcomeres, aren't they? All in a line. And if I contract all of them towards the center, can you see how the muscle would get shorter? Because all of them are gonna contract all the way down the muscle fiber. Does that make sense to you? So that's why there's a bunch of stripes on the muscle fiber, because there's a bunch of M lines. And they're all gonna pull actin towards them. And when they do that in unison, that makes your quads shorten and you can stand up. Right, or sit down, whichever, I stand up. <laughs> I've been to the gym a lot. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so this is one muscle cell with a bunch of little groups of actin and myosin in them. And each of these groups, let's look at this. At the top, look down on your model. This round thing right here, this whole thing, is called a myofibril. Myo, is that on your list? Yes. Yes? Myofibril. So a muscle fiber is made of baby fibers called myofibrils. This whole thing is a muscle fiber, a single muscle cell. A muscle cell, just like you, is more complicated than just, you know, skin and bones. So this whole thing right here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can see seven myofibrils. Groups of the little tiny dots are actin and myosin. Running through. Does everybody see that? Is myofibril on your list? Okay. So I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven myofibrils from the top. A myofibril is full of actin and myosin, isn't it? Didn't we just see actin and myosin in here? Yeah. So if you look at it this way, those little tiny dots are the strands of actin and myosin running through. <coughs> Is there anything else on that list? Are the other things myosin? Yes. They look like they've always looked. Remember, I couldn't identify it on that game. This guy's a mitochondria. There's one. There's one. There's. One. What do we need ATP for? To relax. Two things. To relax the muscle, to break actin and myosin up, right? Myosin's good at that. Myosin's an enzyme, and he's going to break ATP up and turn it into ADP and a phosphate. And also, I need ATP to do what? Turn off the stuff. Push everybody back outside where they don't want to go. When I'm done contracting the muscle, I need to relax and turn the lights off. So that's going to cost me money because I'm going to push all that sodium back out, all that calcium back up into the cisterns, and I'm going to pull all that potassium back in. 
Everybody good? Where is this? Where is this sarcomere between two what? Between two Z discs, right? What's this one right here? M line. So this dark band. Do you remember what that letter was? It's an A. And this light band. What's this light band? I. I. This dark band, the whole thing from end to end is an A. The light band from side to side is an I. And that's why muscles look striped, because of the A bands. 